Now from the diagrams you can see that with this type of point it relies on the switch rails contacting the stock rails for changing the polarity of the crossing V or frog. You can get um, continuous pickup because the frog has power but you can call shorts at the point where the stock rail and the switch rail are close together at point X especially if your clearances are tight or your wheels are too wide. What I prefer would be a control panel um, or just a set of simple switches and we can see that at the other end of this layout where I have two switches for the two cobalt point motors. It's entirely non-DCC, could be used for DCC or analog and just flicking the switch changes the point and the frog polarity now is fed from the switch on top of the cobalt point motor. So that's a completely self-contained device. There is a camera truck which is available from Branner Systems which has the camera in the end um, and it has a micro SD card at the back so that you run this along your track and at the end you plug the USB cable into the rear of the truck and you can download the video. I took one earlier on the club's Ensbury Park layout and you'll be able to see the effect of that. Like the lens unit, the dial goes to maximum and then back to zero. The NCE Pro Cab has a control which has no stop position. So you just push it this way to increase the speed and push it this way to decrease the speed. Now that can be important when you're taking a locomotive over from another controller. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the address and I'm going to set the address um, as if it were this particular locomotive which is number 92226. One of the things we can do with Decoder Pro or with any system really is to change the CVs for acceleration and deceleration and I can see there that what I have set is the acceleration and deceleration both at zero and I'm going to set those to values the value I'm going to put in acceleration will be 30 and I'm going to put a different value in deceleration just to show the effect. Then I'm going to write the changes on the sheet. They've both now been written. I'm going to pull it to the back of the track. I'm now going to start it at the same speed, 50%, and now you'll see that it is accelerating slowly up to that speed and when it reaches maximum speed if I hit stop now it doesn't stop immediately but it comes to a slow halt. Now the speed table consists of a number of different values that can each be set individually in CVs. There is a simpler way of doing things, basic speed control where you simply set what is called the start voltage, the mid voltage and the end voltage. Now with the speed table you can have a number of different types of curves. You can have a curve that begins off slowly and gradually moves to a higher value. You can have a straight line. You can have a curve that starts off rapidly and then gradually tails off. I did have a friend who bought a second hand locomotive and wondered why it couldn't drive very well, the driving was erratic. When we looked at the speed curve with Decoder Pro we found one of the values in the middle was right at the top. So as you increase the speed curve, the, um, the knob on the, the throttle, it suddenly went to full speed and when you move the knob a little bit further it came down to a slower speed. With Decoder Pro we were easily able to see what the problem was and to correct it. This is the speaker as supplied. I'm going to turn the whistle on. 
which is very weak. Um, when I run the loco, you can hardly hear anything at all. One problem with a speaker is that it's, the cone is pushing air and so the front of the cone is pushing air forwards, if you like, and the back of it is pulling air inwards. Therefore, you can get a, sl a certain cancellation of sound between the front and the back of the speaker. This is one reason why putting it in a speaker enclosure is worthwhile. And to illustrate that, I've taken a standard lid, a jam jar lid, Mount, just put the speaker on there, and now the sound is much improved. So the laptop is communicating with the, uh, the lens system, uh, and that, that of course is communicating to the track. The laptop is then communicating to the wireless router and that is connected to the iPod or the iPad via wireless. The only reason we have this cable is so that we can capture the image. In order to start the application, I need to press WI throttle. And because I have defined the various functions in JMRI, they are appearing here as words instead of just F0, F1 and so on. So now I know that that is whistle number one um, and I've got all the other functions as well. And I can control the locomotive by means of the slider um, here. This particular slider is called the yard mode slider. It's a center off, so it's useful for shunting. But if I go back to settings,